a mountain range called the Mountain of the Four Maidens. Located today near the Wolong National Nature Reserve in the Sichuan province of China. These mountains, wrapped in primal forest and clouds, reaching an altitude of almost 10,000 feet, have become the sanctuary for giant pandas, considered living fossils. Giant pandas have been on the planet long before humans appeared. A descendant of the Archaeoteryx, a feathered dinosaur, the panda appeared over eight million years ago living at the same time as the legendary saber-toothed cats. The panda survived the chaos of climate change and deforestation and has adapted to the most extreme conditions in the Sichuan, Shanxi, and Gansu mountain ranges of China. In the past, the panda's habitat extended much further north to Beijing as far south as the Burmese Bay of Bengal, the Ha Jiang Mountains in northern Vietnam, and Ha Long Bay. Today, China is the only country with a wild panda population, which have become a national treasure and the emblem of endangered species. Thanks to proactive policies, the panda population has grown from 1,000 to over 1,800 in more than 60 reserves. At the same time, the world panda population in captivity has reached 600 individuals. The most challenging thing is to increase the small, isolated populations of giant pandas, of which there are around 30. Because these small and fragile populations are gradually declining. The most remote ones, with a population of only about 10 individuals, are disappearing. Only six reserves have over 100 individuals, mainly situated in the central Qinling, Minshan, and Konglai mountains. Fortunately, the successful release of pandas bred in captivity, notably in the Tian Tai Shan National Park, is increasing their overall numbers. Tracked by satellite with radio collars, these pandas have integrated perfectly into the wild population. Remote environments and mixed bloodlines have maintained genetic diversity and saved the panda from extinction. The Tian Tai Mountain preserves a thousand-year-old ecosystem and a fauna from the Ice Age with its large families of Rhinopithecus, or golden snub-nosed monkeys. Powerful and massive wild boars. Clouded leopards. Tibetan antelopes with ringed horns and a multitude of endemic birds. There are also more than 10,000 species of plants and animals in this Eden from another era. Protected by the Kinling and Daba Mountains that block the cold northern air flows, the panda has adapted to this biotope by changing its diet and carnivorous habits to become a bamboo eater, and its morphology has evolved with its new diet.
Surprisingly, its stomach has remained that of a carnivore, requiring it to eat dozens of kilos of bamboo every day. Completely dependent on bamboo, it can eat more than 30 types. The panda's survival is hanging by a single stalk of bamboo. But it has adapted its lifestyle by relying to survive on laziness. Pandas burn just over 1,200 calories a day, half the amount of a human of equivalent weight. They spend less than half their time being active, moving, walking, or rolling around. They prefer gently sloping land to climbing steep slopes, and they avoid direct, energy-consuming social interaction preferring to use their sense of smell to communicate. Laziness has saved the giant panda. What a strange fate. In spring, life bursts forth everywhere. Azaleas bloom, magnolias awaken, rhododendrons and orchids compete with their beauty, bamboos reach high into the sky, umbrella pines growing next to Chinese sequoias shape this dense and sometimes impenetrable forest. Tao, a solitary, well-built male panda, is searching for bamboo in the forests of Shanxi. He weighs almost 200 kilograms, and his claws, as sharp as a scalpel, are his natural tools for shredding bamboo shoots. His infallible sense of smell leads him to the appetizing shoots. He can travel miles to reach the bamboo groves. Unable to store excess fat for hibernation, like his cousins the black bear or the grizzly bear, he must work all year round to find his grail. His adult size commands respect and his few natural predators don't dare to challenge him. Tao can therefore indulge in his favorite activity, napping, without fear of being disturbed. Tao must be strong, ready to fight rivals who will try to steal his coveted female. So he must eat and eat, build up his reserves, plump up his body to appear more powerful. He eats every part of the stem, but he has seasonal preferences. He will guzzle nearly 40 kilos of bamboo shoots a day. The stems, covered by husks that he peels away to reach the softer, more appetizing core, are also on the menu. This selection of plants influences seasonal migrations, 
as does the ambient temperature. The palatability of the bamboo will guide his travels. From its dependence on bamboo, the panda has developed a sixth sense. It memorizes the location of the most prolific forests to return to when the rushes regrow, sometimes six months later. The abundance of bamboo and its specific renewal cycle explain, at least partially, why the panda has turned to this plant as its main source of food. Surprisingly, it eats different parts of the bamboo depending on the different seasons. In January and February, the panda feeds almost exclusively on bashanya leaves. In March and April, it adds bashanya bamboo culms, or hollow stems, to its diet. And in early April, new shoots. In summer, pandas eat exclusively fargesia shoots, both that year's fresh ones and those from the previous year. Finally, from September to February, they only eat bashanya leaves, sometimes with old fargesia culms. Who else in the animal kingdom knows bamboo better than Mr. Panda? Would Tao be able to predict his movements according to the growth cycle of bamboo? Other rare and endangered species also benefit from this dependence on bamboo groves. Golden pheasants, tachins, rhinopithecus monkeys, and Japanese crested ibis have found refuge in these thick forests. Tao reigns in these stubble forests, but, like a king without a crown, he is fragile. A reluctant symbol, the giant panda is catalogued as an umbrella species. Because by protecting its vast territory, it preserves a large number of other species that make up this biodiversity.